Good morning. My name is uh, Gérald Panaton. I'm the executive chairman of a company named Gold Terra Corporation or Resource Corporation. We explore in Canada, Northwest Territory, uh, more precisely in the town of Yellowknife, where we already have outlined 1.2 million ounces, 43101, in two small pit. Our company focused on developing more resources south of the existing con mine, where we just did an important acquisition or purchase option to acquire the con mine uh, following uh, discovering 2 million ounces plus. Fantastic, Gerald. Lovely to see you. Uh, we saw you in London, actually, not so long ago, about a month ago with David Suda, the CEO. Uh, really intriguing story. And I wanted to get, wanted to get you back on because obviously I saw the um, the deal with Newmont um, in, in the recent press release. I want to talk about that one. But first, I want to introduce you to this audience um, on a little bit of background because you came on board at, at David's behest to help him change things around. What was the problem that you walked into and what did you feel you needed to do? Well, you know, my background is technical. I, I am a geologist. I've built three gold mines. I've raised, I've, I find a lot of gold. Wherever I, I take a project, it's because there's potential to find more gold. You, you, my trademark is very simple. If I take a project, there's more to be found. If I don't take it, there's nothing to be found. So when I evaluated what David was trying to do in Yellowknife, he definitely needed a new set of eyes, uh, a different approach, a better focus. Uh, and the first thing I realized is that the company that he took uh, reign of in 2018, uh, the focus was not in the right place. I think there was a big lack of focus. You know, a, a company needs to focus because junior company have two years, one year to live. If you don't find anything in two years, you're dead. So Terra X basically had been working in Yellowknife for five years when David joined, and uh, they were not focusing at the right place. I saw that the first day I was in their office. What's the solution then? Because I, I agree with you. People, they just keep going and keep going, and they it's almost you can't see the wood for the trees. You, you, you get blinded. So what was the quick fix as far as you were concerned? Well, it's very simple. I mean, Yellowknife is a tremendous gold camp in Canada history. They mined 14 million ounces at a grade of 15 to 22 grams, half an ounce plus. This is rich ore. This is like Red Lake, similar to Red Lake story, right? And uh, or Olinger McIntyre, you know, story in Timmins. Um, so this is like high grade mining, which means. It shut down in 2003, and after mining 14 million ounces from one plumbing system named the Campbell Shear, you ask the question, how come you're never focusing on the Campbell Shear? Why are you going there and there and this and that? And forget about focusing what generated 14 million ounces, and you're telling me that that structure is 70 kilometers long, and you have all of it, but you've never put a hole in it. That simple. So that's a conversation with the previous management team who've been at it, hard at it, cash constrained, not seemingly drilling in, 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 the, in the right point. How do you persuade a team like that that they need to change? Is it just based on your, your reputation? You walked in, you made three <laughs> discoveries, you go- You don't know me. Well, I've met you enough you times to, 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 to suggest that you're not shy, but how do you persuade that team they need to change? How did you do it? Well, it's very simple. You just tell them that you're out. Right. You're not deciding anything anymore. But you can't I do that. I raise the money. But you raise the money, right. Oh, and you yeah. put your own money in. I raise the money. Right. I raise the money. We could not raise any more money. When I joined, I bought a million share at 36 cents because the company had no more money. And then I raised money in December at 26 cents and I bought more again. And, and then we had money to drill. So we, we also did not have the, the new Mon deal yet. But I started in December 2019, just before starting to raise money to approach Newman. And the previous management did try. Unfortunately, David is not from this mining uh, background. So he has no in in Newmont. Joe Campbell tried, and he was declined. But Gerald Panaton has a certain, it's not that I want to talk about 
myself. It's just that I'm able to open doors yeah, because look, of what I've done in the past. I don't, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't mind you talking about yourself, but if, if it gets things done, there's no, no problem with this one. But I, I just need to you know, be, be clear with you and clear with this audience here. The, whatever people thought of Gold Terra before you came along, forget it. That's what you're saying. This is a new company. This is a new Ooh, beginning. Not completely, not completely that, but almost. Okay. Okay. Because they've done a great job putting the package together, but they forget about the most important thing, the Campbell Shear. Okay. And they've never put a hole on it. And the Campbell Shear extends to the north. Yeah, let, let's get on the Campbell Shear. Like, I, 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 I want to fin finish on you know, you, the, the permission that you have to talk like this and be like this. One, you've raised the money, but two, and I'm surprised you haven't mentioned it already, is you're the founder and president and CEO of Detour Gold Corporation, right? That was you. Yep. Okay. Yep. No one else. I am the one who deliver more than 20, 30 million ounces in resource, 16 million ounces in reserve, build the mine and raise 2.6 billion in six years. Nobody else. There's no question on that. And I'm not even shy of saying it. I had a team. Don't get me wrong. I put the team together. But I can tell you that without my championship, without my dedication, uh, my experience of knowing, surrounding myself with Louis Zian. Louis Zian as a mining engineer. Louis and I have worked together for 27 years from the Barrick days where I spent 12 years, where Louis and I worked together. Plus going to Detour, starting Detour. Louis was my first director. I went to Newcastle Gold. D Louis was on my board. I started to join Goldterra two years ago. Louis was a director before the end of the year. Lou Louis and I are a team. We understand the economics of gold deposit as a team more than a lot of people. There are, there are other teams. I'm not, we're not the only one. But we're a successful team, him and I. Okay. You have, you have permission. A lot of trust. You have a lot of trust in him. He's joined you in, in, in this venture here, so he, he believes in what you see here as well. That is, and I just want people to understand that. Like some, sometimes people can come on and uh, it, it comes across really badly, you know, being this bold, but I think you've got permission on all fronts to actually, you know, state your case. Um, it's allowed you to open the door at Newmont. So let's, let's which I think is could be the quick fix. So the guys have done a job up until now, but it was never going to go anywhere meaningfully go anywhere. What do you think this conversation with Newmont is going to allow you to do with this company? Well, I knew from the start that the evaluation of the, of the, of the Campbell Shear south of Conline was the key to success. And so we start negotiating with Newmont and it, it took us to the first deal, which was a foot in the door, an exploration deal to earn 60% which was signed in September, 2020. Uh, following our drilling in the first phase and the fact that I, when I knocked on the door of Newman the first time was to get the deal I have now, but it was, they were not willing to do it right away. They wanted to take their time and said, look, the door is open, we'll, we'll discuss. Of course, within a year within the deal being signed, I already knocked on the door back in the spring in June and they opened the door in July and I said, Listen, um, you know, I think we could probably find a way if Barry can do a deal with Skina, and, and you know, Skina, Skina Barrick deal 2017 is a very, very similar deal as Golterra and Newmont. But very few people can sign a deal with Newmont. Very, very, very few. There are a lot more um, conservative and careful about who they do a deal with. Uh, their, their level of scrutiny is much, much higher than the one uh, with Barrick. And I know that from even my Barrick days. So when we did the, the negotiation, we got a foot in the door. We got to know each other more. They've known me because they were at Detour Gold to evaluate it back then. And, and then we basically decided to go back to the table at the end of July. I was blacked out for four months. And um, you can see that I've started buying again the stock since the deal has been announced. So I didn't take any advantage of, of the situation. And I think we signed one of the most important deal in Golterra's history to find two, three million ounces of gold, have access to some infrastructure that could be useful down to about 1,950 meters depth, 
people don't realize the the, 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 there's no there's no public disclosure of the value of what we can get from the con mine, you know, except the warehouse, some mobile equipment. But try to sink a shaft 2,000 meters deep in today's world, like Alamos is doing on island project, and it's $70 million US, two years to complete. We have that, and we probably can dewater it and rehabilitate it in less than three months. So there's a huge advantage uh, in terms of time, in terms of the value infrastructure. We probably got a deal where we're going to end up benefiting from $100 million more of infrastructures. Okay, well, break, break, break the deal down for me, because obviously they've also put a million and a half bucks in, which doesn't seem, seem like a lot, but when you couple it with what you're going to also get access to in terms of what money has previously been spent, it's, it's a lot. But what, what do they get out of it? What's their expectation of what you need to do and by when? Well, if we, it's very simple. I mean, Newman knows very well what I've done at Detour. I bought the project. It was one and a half million ounces for $75 million, 50 bucks an ounce, US or Canadian, whatever you want to call it, back in 2006 or seven. So I took the project to 30 million ounces just because you just need to drill. And the same thing here, you just need to drill. It's not like you need to find the structure. You know exactly what the structure is. Just need drilling. So when they, they see me coming, they said, well, uh, we want to back and write just in case. So if you find five million ounces, which will be the threshold for, uh, for them, then, you know, we have a back and write. So I'm loose. I get to two, three, four million ounces. The back and write is two years post purchase agreement executed, which means that it gives them six years to make, their, make up their mind. If they like what I'm doing, they can buy stock. Right, they can participate in some financing if they want. They don't have a right to participate. We didn't give them, so it's to be negotiated every time. But at least they have an opportunity. We're always going to be in good. Uh, they're very good partner. There's no question. And uh, if we find four million ounces and they still like it, they can still buy the company. If they don't want, then they have a two percent NSR. So they're going to get something out of it, right? And, and if I find five, six, seven million ounces and they really, really like it, they're going to do a back and write. But the back and write is so expensive for them. It's almost $200 million. Right. So you, you better work today between now and then. So let, let's look at what you've got today. Because <clears throat> obviously, Gold Tower is you know, a, little bit, a little bit cash. It's got a small amount of money and you raised some money previously, not a lot. Another million and a half in from, from Newmont. You need to see a reaction in the marketplace to this deal to be able to go and raise money at the, at the levels that you, you, you want to? Um, or do you have to tickle along bottom raising small amounts of money for the next year or, or two? I mean, how, how do you play this? Your, does your reputation allow you to go and raise uh, you know, a large sum of money with, uh, and uh, inexpensively or are you like everyone else? Yeah, but I hate dilution. I hate Who dilution. Doesn't? So we'll go step by step. Okay. It's all about the share price. Okay. If my share price was was a million a dollar today. If my share price was a dollar today, I would probably raise twenty million, right? Right. But if the share price is thirty cents, maybe I'll raise five, six million dollars and do the first phase of the program, and and then get the result out, and then raise some more money at a higher price. If you look at all the raises I've done at Detour, they were going up all the way to twenty eight bucks. I raised money from 350 to 16 a year later, down to nine bucks, small financing, just to secure it because there was an offer on the table. You never refuse money when there's when there's an offer. Uh, and and but we always manage a dilution. I almost built detour from an IPO standpoint of view of 40 million share to just above 100 million share. This is a different vehicle. This is what we call a used car. It needs money all the time. Uh, it's broken down. It's got a flat tire. It's not rolling perfectly yet. But the engine and the model and the target is very good. So you have to live with what you have in the market condition that you are. So what are you, what are you able to do, though? What, what do you take from what you did at Detour, which is like the starting point slightly different, right? You, you just said that. Um, and the vehicle slightly different. So what are the bits that you can take and say, 
I can utilize this. It's got to be, I clearly, okay, your reputation is a big part of that. Your ability to go and uh, talk to anyone, great. But you're going to finance this thing and you're not immune to market conditions. You're not immune to the c current share register and, 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 and uh, structure of the, of the company affecting the cost of the money that you're going to raise going forward. So you can't do an accelerated delivery. So just, just explain how you think you tackle it because, um, you can, you know, this, this this is going to be expensive drilling, isn't it? I mean, we go step by step. You know, it's like the liability is is not a big thing if you have if you find two million ounces, right? So I don't mind taking a five to eight million dollars Canadian liability on my book if I find two million ounces that are worth say two hundred million dollars, right? But do you so but do you get to but do you, do you get to join up? Step. But what do you I get to join to, up the previous? What I need to do next year? Yeah. Can I can I ask about the, the the existing resource versus what you're going to need to go and find? Because do you get to join them up, or do you are you looking at the existing resource and say, well, you know that that is what it is, but that's kind of that's separate from this. There's a great there's a great great optionality that the feasibility study will look when you do a PFS, a pre feasibility study that becomes a feasibility study. You're looking at optionality, optionality of what is the most economic way to develop this project. Is it to rebuild the mine on the mine site of the con mine? Or is it better, say, for example, to build a mill at Crestoram Samoto? Just to give you how far we can go in terms of optionality, we know them. Louis and I can put them all on a piece of paper and know exactly what to do in the feasibility study. And I can tell you, for example, that maybe it would be a better ESG value for the town of Yellowknife if we put the mill 10 kilometers north of the mine, but not of the town. I mean, the new mine property, the car mine is right in town. Okay, we're in the city limit. Uh, we have to pay tax for the city, things like this. So maybe we just go mine the car mine, but truck the ore with the bypass that is already existing around the town to Crestoram, build a bigger mill, 5,000 ton per day, bring Crestoram into the picture, because it's there. We know it's there. It's even drilled on 25 meters spacing. So we know we have roughly almost 300,000 ounces down to about 200 meters vertical that can be mined. And, and then you don't have to truck it too far. And the grade is about six gram. Six gram is like today's world, six gram is 360 US a ton. You put the mill right beside, you truck a thousand ton at 10 gram. You build a 5,000 ton per day mill and you produce 200,000 ounces a year. That's when Newmont and others will look at us with more interest because it's a significant 200,000 ounces a year in town where everybody goes home at night. But they, they, this is quite interesting to me because that, that's quite big thinking. You're thinking big. You're not thinking like a small company because to, to, to do some of the things you're talking about, it's going to cost a little bit more money upfront to do things like that. And that could be distracting unless you know what the end game is. And you seem very, very clear what the end game is here. You're trying to make this attractive to Newmont or similar, right? Because you, you can't, there's no competitive tension if you're just, you know, you know, making it look pretty for Newmont. You've got to make it look pretty for, you know, all, all comers. Um, my job, my, my job is to create shareholder value. Yeah. Right? That's my job. It's not about selling the company. My job is to create shareholder value with the budget I have and with the goal of putting it in production if we want to. Yeah, but, but, but my, my, the thing I'm trying to understand here is that if you're going to be talking to what it, you kind of predominantly retail focused uh, share register, they need to understand that these are big ideas which may, may cost a little bit more money because you're going to, to do things a little bit differently compared to regular small exploration play, right? If your investors, the retail investor, look at the Skina Barrick story, which started in December 2017, four years ago. Skina was in the dull drums like we are kind of today. Despite having 1.2 million ounces, our value is only 30 bucks an ounce, okay? So... We don't have a big market cap. We're maybe $25, $30 an ounce. It's very low. What I'm bringing to an investor is an opportunity to have 2 million ounces more at 10 gram plus south of the mine. 
And if we use the mine again, I can add maybe another million ounces from the mine itself that was left there when they shut down in 203. That's 3 million ounces plus 1.2. That's 4.2 million ounces. Skina is now worth six, seven hundred million dollars US, a billion dollar Canadian in four years. That's, and then if I'm worth, uh, you know, 500 million dollars, it's still a 10 bagger from today. With small budget to advance a project, we're not putting it in production yet. We're just advancing. So how much would it cost me, say, to get to 2 million ounces and a feasibility study? That's the right question for the investor. How much it will cost Gerald to take? And you know, a feasibility study, 80% of your cost is drilling. Prove up the deposit. That's what it is. So how much would it cost me in two years, over the next two years, to prove up 2 million ounces south of the mine? Right, what's the answer? I can tell you next year, I'd like to do 100,000 meters of drilling which will cost me 20 million. How fast will I do this? I don't know. Why? Because I don't know what the share price will be when I raise money, right? And I will not want to dilute the shareholder base and I'm not going to do a consolidation. So, because there's no catalyst. And if I find a million ounces in the first six months with say $5 million, then my cost of finding ounces of gold is $5 an ounce. That's what the beauty about this management team and this project being in town is that if with $5 million, I find a million ounces potential, that costs $5 an ounce. To bring it to feasibility study probably will cost somewhere between $25 to $40 million. But if I get to 2 million ounces with $40 million, it's still 20 bucks an ounce. That's how exploration company how much money are you going to spend to get to your objective? And is it realistic? So the question, the question is like going around my head at the moment. It was obviously, it's like, why on earth did you then bring the Campbell share opportunity into, into Gold Terra, given you know it, it, its history, right? You start, you're starting from a sort of complicated place. Um, one, why, why would you do that? And two, in terms of what value do you think you get with the 1.2 million? inferred answers at the moment because you know some of it's open pit a majority of it's open pit at 1.25 grams if i remember correctly and and some of it's underground you know so that's going to have a different cost structure cost base to anything new answers that you find so it's 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 already kind of complicated isn't it no not at all first of all the the word is very it's very wrongly used to call it inferred the reason we're calling infer it's because we don't have the mining method, we don't have the metallurgy with it. It's just an infer resources, but it's constrained into a pit at $1,300 an ounce or $1,400 an ounce. Those ounces at Crestorum or Samoto, our boat can be pushed all the way down and remain just a pit. So basically, you do Crestorum first, and then when Crestorum is over, you move your equipment to Samoto. Very simple. It's in my mind, it's and Samoto is still open. It's 800,000 ounces of gold and could probably grow to a million and a half or two in my mind. Plus you include Mispercol to the north, which is also open, which is a high grade deposit. But the first one, the easiest one to drill and to bring in production faster is Crestorum because of its grade. You're talking six gram open pit. This is, this is good, you know? This is very good grade for an open pit. It's excellent. But my, my point to you is, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. In your mind, you you can you can sort of you you you're looking at the picture and you understand where the, where the parts go. And I'm trying I'm trying to understand it myself in terms of the order of play, given the restrictions on on, on capital or the capital constraints, I should say. So you, you think there is some value in 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 those projects, and in which case, what's the order of play? Do you need to kind of release uh, value it's from that simple. first, or you go to the Campbell share first? I can tell you, th this question was answered two years ago by me. You cannot put a low grade. And I've, look, my experience with Detour, you don't want to have your main project or your main driver for a mine with a low grade deposit. You do not want that. I will never do a Detour Gold again because of the grade. And because when gold price goes down, first of all, it's too capital intensive. But satellite open pit of low grade 
coupled with a high-grade deposit, Con Mine was producing 1,000 tons per day. The highest they went was 1,400 tons per day. So I know very well there are some limits about going back in the con mine, but the value of 10 gram gold is $600 US a ton in today's gold price. And the cost of operating underground is about $200 Canadian underground. The margin is amazing on a high grade deposit. There's no question in my mind that when gold price goes down, if you have a low grade deposit only, you're the first one out of the door for any investor or institution. Well, when gold price fluctuate, because I don't build, I don't find answers because of gold price going up or down. I find answers because it's a way to create value. Like we did a detour, like Skina is doing with Barrick on the SK Creek project. SK Creek now, four years ago, was worth almost nothing. Now they're worth a billion Canadian. This is what Golterra could become by finding 2 million ounces south of the con mine. And then you add what's left on the con mine and you have a 3 million ounces deposit. So Samoto, which is currently with Kersaram, worth 30 bucks a ton, $30 an ounce, sorry, valuation. With the con mine development, all those ounces could be worth 100. because they make a package together that is a lot more um, valuable. Because of the first step, and I saw it two years ago, you cannot go on Samoto alone. You cannot have the restaurant because it's not big enough. So you need 2 million ounces at 10 grand. That is your threshold to be able to spend the money to build a meal and go back Perfect. Your mind in your Understood. Explain. For, that's very well explained. I understand it. So it's also the criteria by which we judge you going forward. You need to find 2 million answers at that super high grade. What information have you got today or were you going to get from Newmont, which gives you confidence that you can do that for the cost that you need to do it for? It's a very good question. But if we had the presentation up front, I would show you exactly. Do you want to do that? What it is. Do you want to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so because I can just use a couple of slides Perfect. quickly on the presentation. So, going back uh, to uh, the importance of the, the the con acquisition, very quickly, you have it on the screen, right? You see it for sure. Yeah, yeah, good. So you can see our land position, and what's important about this is that when you look at the four red box, this is where our one point two million ounces is barely like 15 kilometers north of town. So we're still in town basically. Everybody can still go back home at night, no question. Now, the acquisition of New Mount is that purple box here. It's very small, but in the trend of the 14 million ounces that has been mined. So now let's look at, uh, you know, a, a bit of a closer look at the acquisition of the, the potential acquisition to purchase the coal mine. What you see here is a fault called the West Bay Fault and the pod fault that bound the deposit for two kilometers of strike length, okay? It is displaced to the north to become the giant mine and to the south by the pod fault immediately south on the southern block. And you can see this is the, the small displacement that we have here. So there's a big displacement here, but this one is a very small one. And there's another smaller displacement right there where the Camp Point North deposit is. And so now we're going to look at the compilation of all that from a vertical point of view. So on this slide, you're looking at, you're looking west from the north to the south, vertically for two kilometers down. What you see as the big bobs is 5 million ounces mine over a period of 50 years. Shut down in 203 when gold was $350 an ounce. After sinking a shaft in the 70s, the Robertson shaft, down to about 2,000 meters, 1,950 meters exactly. That could be used in the future. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be used now because I don't know, but it will definitely be considered as maybe pulling the ore up if we ever had that depth. And there's also another shaft in very good condition, which is C1, 
which was the original shaft from the car mine, that is a bit less deep. It's roughly, I think, at the 2300 level, so about 2300 feet deep. Now, what's very important about this deposit is that it's cut off by the north, to the north, and it's cut off also by the south. And when you look and be very, this is, look, there's, there's a hole here, 14 grams over four, five meters. There's another one, Y86, 14 grams over five meters at 1,000 meters elevation. This year, we've been drilling the Yellow Rex deposit because we could not drill there. It was not part of the deal with Newmont. And that's the reason why I wanted to have and improve the deal with Newmont to get 100% but also get access to everything because I didn't have that in the first deal. So when you look at our drilling in 2022, that white box, that's where we're going to be spending 100 by 100 meters drill spacing to outline the position of the shear zone. Once we've outlined the position of the shear zone, we're going to have success in so many holes that will lead into follow-up drilling on 50 by 50. That's our strategy. So the first step is drill 100 by 100 all the way to about 1,800 meters vertical. And that should lead us to the potential of two, three million ounces. That is a brilliant diagram. I love that diagram. It's so obvious what you're going to do and why you think there will be success. I love it. Yeah, I added this box actually uh, very recently and in between two meetings because uh, someone asked me where you're drilling. So I had the box and they said, this is the target. This is where we're drilling. And then we're probably going to have a, one big drill that drilled the deeper hole and another drill that will follow up with 50 by 50. So my first phase in 2022 is to drill 100 by 100. If I have enough money and the share price is good, I'll have the second and the third rigs. Gotcha. Understood. Right. That, that just kind of that just opened everything up for me. That, that's, it seems simple, but it's a really amazing... The box changes the diagram. I love it. Okay, um, Joel, that, that's great. Is there anything else you want to show from the, the, the presentation? I, I don't think we need more than this. This is not, so, neither do I. It's not a question about where to drill. It's how much can we drill and how fast can we drill it? Right, so let's get rid of the, the PowerPoint here and let's, let's, let's talk about the money side of things just very quickly and then I'll, I'll let you go, I promise, um, which is, you, you've very ably des described where you want to go and why, and that makes a lot of sense. What do you do about the share price now? How do you drive that interest now, given the market at the moment? Pressure metal market under a lot of pressure. No one's interested. They they're looking elsewhere. Something something's going on. Do you sit and yeah, wait this out? Market. You have to live with it. Right. But can you work in it? You live with it, but can you work in it? Of course. Look, it's very simple. Like I explained to you, when you do a raise in financing, because we're in that position, you don't want to dilute your shareholder base more than 10%, 15% at the maximum. You do some flow through, which help. This year, we did a, a good financing at 36 cents. Okay. And one, one account, which is institutional, took the whole thing. So we know exactly where it went. So we don't do retail flow through. We do selective flow through. So people are there for the story and not for the tax purpose. So the back end is very strong. The back end is very strong, but you also need some of this uh, volatility. You need some of this liquidity. You need to get the excitement. Going. Drill result. Drill result. Drill result. I hope so. Keep drilling, keep drilling, keep drilling, keep drilling, never stop. We're planning, we're planning to have a permanent road 12 months a year to access the Campbell Shear and our drill platforms to facilitate the drilling. One access road, it's probably, hopefully it can happen this winter. If not, it's going to happen in the spring. But next year, we're planning to drill 12 months. You are, it, 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 when you get the money, right? So how much money you got today? What's that, how much drilling are you going to be able yes, to announce? We've got the $4 million. Right, so yeah, what's that give $4 you? $4 million dollars in the bank. So we, we, we can start with one rig and, and we have probably six months to raise money if we want, if we don't like what we're seeing. So it's not like we're against the wall. We're definitely not against the wall. Okay, so we'll, next time we see, we saw the press release yesterday um, in terms of the uh, 2.38 meters over 4.7 meters and 12.95 over, you know, just over half a meter. It's, 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 
that's what we can expect to see, or that's what you're chasing anyway. So no, no, no? you should expect this, these are these are our worst results. What? <laughs> why, why put them out then? What do you mean your worst results? Well, because you have to put them out. People ask you, and and uh, you know, they, they where are the result, and you have to do result on a relative basis, right? So when we have them, we put them in, in a batch. But the, the the next press release could be completely different. It could be like hole 14, where we had 12 grams over five meters, you know, or five grams over 18 meters, which is like a GT of 100. And that the GT of 100 on the slide that you saw a few moments ago is like the pink. So it's rich. And, and you, when you drill a shear zone, you cannot expect to have success spectacular success on every hole. The main point is, is the shear zone is there. We're drilling every 100 meters or every 75 meters now on that upper. Once we get 100 meters, we will have some, we will hit the shear zone every time. There's no question. That shear zone is very easy to target. It's a piece of plywood in space. And we know exactly where the space is and where the plywood is. The question is, you know, it's like the old days. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. I, I spent 10 years in Valdor. So I, I know very well the BTB Greenstone Bell. That was my, my backyard for many, many years as a geologist. You could go to a mine, and when they do the infill drilling to prove up the stope, one hole out of five was enough to mine the stope and do a mining decision. So you will, you will drive the drift. And then you will infill the, the zone. And, and if, if you had nothing over 100 feet, then you may leave it there. But if you have only one hole, that would interesting, you will do it. Why? Because that's the nature of gold. When you have a high-grade deposit, it's not super consistent. It's more erratic, like it says. But once you know the gold is there, you can mine it. And sometimes the reconciliation post-mining is two times, three times better. And that's your level of confidence. And that reason we're very comfortable is because we know the shear zone is there. We're going to be drilling it. We're going to have results like yesterday that are good, average, or maybe below average. But we know that the good ones are coming as well. Okay. Well, look, I'm, I'm just kind of conscious of, of, of time here. I'm excited for what, you're, what you've done. I'm excited for what you're trying to do and, and seeing more of these drill results coming out. And I've thought of a way you might be able to save some money, which is quite, you might find useful, which is if you can power the drill using your enthusiasm and energy, you could save a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard, I, uh, I, you know, I'm turning 64 in a few days. Oh, stop and that. I can tell you, I still have plenty of energy. I know. Uh, <laughs> we all know. And, and because I love it. I, I, love, I love being on a good project. And I love knowing that I can create shareholder value. Well, let's stay in touch. Come on regularly. We'd love, love to see how you're getting on. I love that kind of turnaround story and a big picture story. So you're, you're delivering both of those. Joel, we'll see you in the new year. Have a wonderful uh, holiday um, period and we'll hopefully see you uh, quite soon. All the best. Thank you very much.